a hot diplomatic mess, countrywide protests, and a sacked minister allegedly on the run. These three phrases describe the headlines from Libya since this morning. The country's foreign minister, Naila Al-Mangush, has been dismissed after Israel announced a meeting took place between her and her counterpart, Eli Cohen. A probe has now been filed against Mangush. She has reportedly fled to Turkey, fearing a few raw. Big developments from the North African country. What actually happened? What led to it? What is to come? We now break it down to you. Libyan Foreign Minister, as we said, has been dismissed after her claimed contact with Israel. Libya has been on the boil since the news came out. Angry protesters took to the streets of the capital and other western cities on Sunday night. They blocked roads with burning tires and marched for Palestine after reports of the meeting started coming in. The African country is a strong backer of the Palestinian cause. It does not recognize Israel. Moreover, it is illegal to even attempt normalization with Israel as per the Libyan law. In the aftermath of the claimed meeting, the Speaker's office in Parliament has accused Mangush of grand treason. The Prime Minister has even referred her for investigation. The Libyan officials, meanwhile, say that the meeting was a core incident both ministers were in the same place at the same time. They defended it as a chance encounter, even accused Israel of trying to present this incident as a meeting or even talks. While there is uproar in Libya, the Israeli minister is all praises about the meeting. On Sunday, the foreign ministry released a statement where we are quoting Cohen. It hailed the meeting hosted by Italy as historic. He said it was the first step in establishing ties with Libya. Early in the day, Israeli officials told news agencies that the meeting was pre-planned and approved at the highest levels. This was just hours before the foreign ministry strangely backtracked. After releasing a statement on Sunday about the supposed meeting, Israeli officials are playing dumb. They claim to have no idea about who leaked the details of the meeting. The ministry now says, contrary to what has been published, the leak regarding the meeting with Libya's foreign minister did not come from the foreign ministry or the foreign minister's office. The Israeli opposition has slammed the diplomatic office. Former Prime Minister Yai Lapid accused the ministry of being amateurish and irresponsible. While opposition leader Benny Gantz accused the Israeli government of doing everything for PR and headlines with zero responsibility and forward thinking. Not just Israel and Libya, even Italy is denying the meeting. As per the AFP, an Italian diplomatic source say the Italian foreign minister, Antonio Tajani, had not himself been present at the meeting. Amid it all, Libya's internal security agency said that Mangush had not been authorized to lead the North African country. The statement came after social media uproar that she had flown to Turkey overnight. The ISA say that she is on the travel ban list and they will soon refute reports of her fleeing. The announcement of the meeting by Israel came as a surprise for many. There was no hint about Israel quoting Libya. It is rather a champion of the Palestinian movement, especially under former leader Muammar Gaddafi. And even if there was quoting to say, even the Libyan or Libya's political turmoil would have made things complicated. Amikai Stain is a journalist who is joining us live from Jerusalem. Amikai, thank you very much for making time for We On Wild Is One today. Israeli Foreign Ministry says they did not leak the meeting information. Does the Libyan government have the legal uh, rights to prosecute the minister, even though it is reported that the minister did say or had refused to meet with any party representing Israel? So Israeli officials claim that um, the meeting held last week was um, with the knowledge of the most senior people in Libya, meaning the Libyan government claimed these days that um, they didn't know about the meeting, that the minister went by herself, and it wasn't really a meeting. Israeli officials are saying this is not true, meaning we spoke for several months. It was a meeting that lasted almost two hours. Uh, all senior officials in Libya knew about the meeting. 
and it again something happened that caused the Libyan government to go and back down. They saw the protest, they saw uh, the opposition starting to attack the government. But again, Israeli officials are claiming the meeting was with the knowledge of the most senior people in Libya. The minister went to Rome to meet Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen with the approval of the government. And again, it wasn't behind the scene. It wasn't her idea or her going alone. The Libyan government was behind her when she went there. Amikai, the Libyan Presidential Council is now seeking clarification on this matter. How do you think this is going to play out as far as diplomacy between Israel and Libya is concerned? So I think the, 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 the event is dead, meaning the diplomatic attempts to see some kind of normalization between Israel and Libya, and this point is completely dead. We know that the U.S. even started this attempt back in January when the head of the CIA, William Burns, went to Libya and spoke with the prime minister about normalization issues. The prime minister didn't pull it out, but he said, I need to make the people ready for this option. And from there up until now, there was behind the scene conversation between Israeli officials, um, US officials, Libyan officials. It was all behind the scene. Now, Israel decision to make this public and Libya decision to deny all and uh, fire the minister makes this channel, I think, dead until the next time. Amikail, now that you're in Israel, let's talk about what is happening there. How is it playing out in Israel, given that the foreign minister, Eli Cohen, has been attacked by the former prime minister, Yair Lapid, saying this is what happens when you appoint a person with no background in the field? So uh, remember Israeli political situation right now. Eli Cohen is supposed to, to end his term as foreign minister at the end of the year, meaning he has several months to show that he has made a huge achievement. And that, in his eyes, probably what the Libyan story was. Now, again, if Israeli officials are claiming that they knew that the Libyans are OK with this meeting going public, the question is, when you look strategical and when you look further away, is it a good idea to go out and make public a discrete channel that is not, let's say, officially done or in cooked? So this, I think, is the main mistake of the Minister Cohen and the Foreign Ministry. The decision to go out and make it public without thinking what might it do to the Libyan public, what might it do to the government that might go back, might destroy the discrete channel that really showed huge progress when you had this meeting last week. And that's the main uh, uh, problem I, I see in the story. That's why everyone is attacking Minister Cohen, even let's say from the coalition right. without saying their names, but as senior Israeli officials from the coalition are attacking Cohen and this time. Amikai, finally, and I want your quick response to this one. Forget Libya. How does this put Israel in terms of diplomatic trust with the Arab countries, given the optimism that, you know, the Abraham Accords created? So for years, the main problem of Israeli-Arab relations was Israeli officials leaking information outside. I can tell you that even during the Abraham Accords talks, senior Trump officials told me Guys, you're leaking, you're damaging yourself. Why are you doing it to yourself? You could have had more agreements. We could have made more deals if Israeli officials wouldn't have leaked things outside. And you see it during the Abraham Accords. You see the leak when Netanyahu went uh, to meet the Saudi crown prince in Saudi Arabia and the prime minister's office leaked it out and it made damage to Israel-Saudis behind the scenes relations. So historically, Israel is leak outside. It causes damage. I think also this story will cause huge mistrust when it comes to behind the scenes meetings. Amikai Stein, thank you very much for your insights and for talking to Beyond Wilders One today. Thank you very much.